Welcome to the Brian Wright Audio Experience, a podcast dedicated to helping entrepreneurs grow their business, make more money, and successfully navigate through the chaos of life, all while working, spending, and stressing less. And now your host, he's a husband, a father of two, an international business and life coach, and a trusted motivational speaker for some of the most respected companies in the world, such as Invisalign and many others. Brian Wright. Hey, Brian Wright Show Nation. Welcome inside the broadcast booth to another edition of the Brian Wright Show. Hope everybody is doing good out there. We are going to continue on today with topics around the phones. Just coming off a podcast that really, in essence, is a way to add 20, 30 percent increase to your customers overnight without having to do anything from an advertising perspective outside your doors. It is something so simple. So easy, but so complex at the same time, because a lot of you, just your interactions and your daily businesses are so chaotic, so stressful, so non-efficient that you just have these leaky holes everywhere that you can't put your finger on. Your data sheet doesn't tell you. And what I talked about in the last episode is exactly that is a very unique way to be able to grow your customer base, your new customers, your new patients, your new clients, whatever the heck you want to call them, just by changing your mindset and doing one thing right now that you are losing out upon and seeing value in making that investment. One of the things I do want to clarify, you know, I go back and listen to not all, but some of the podcasts and, you know, it's just like what I teach out there. You know, I I try to constantly challenge myself on maybe I could have articulated this better and said this a different way. And, you know, we all have our faults. And one of the ones, actually, when I go back and listen to some of these episodes earlier on to the Brian Wright show, I say the word inevitably a lot. And I didn't even realize it. Stephanie, shout out to you. She's an employee of of mine and just a priceless, just angel uh, type of employee, rock star to say the least. And she's part of my company, New Patient Group, and my other one, Right Chat. She actually brought that up to me one day. And I didn't. I go back and now when I listen to it, it stands out like a sore thumb. But that's part of when I go back and listen to these things, I'm challenging myself to give it to get better, to give all of you a better experience, which is just what we challenge all of you to do with your businesses, with what you're offering to your customer, what you're offering to your employees from an employee experience standpoint is constantly challenging yourself to to break everything down and and build it back up. And once you build it back up, break it down again, build it back up. And one of the things I listened to when I listened to the last episode is I want to make sure all of you understand the problem I talked about doesn't exist only or it does it it exist it does not exist only for people without a receptionist. You know, I made a comment, you know, some of the some of you out there that are solo operations, you know, you're a day spa or whatever it may be and and if you're in with your customer and the phone rings, how much business you're losing by not answering that because nobody leaves a voicemail anymore. And even if they did, it, it, it looking at it from an infinite standpoint, it still represents your brand like crap whenever the phones aren't answered. You've all called, we've all called places that didn't answer and it's annoying or put you on hold or whatever. It's a bad brand experience that sometimes you can put your finger on, but most of the time you can't put your finger on it. So I want to clarify though, it's not just for those businesses, you know, right chat, you know, we answer missed calls for, for companies and it's mainly in over in the healthcare space. And, and when we answer as the backup, you know, the emergency, uh, you know, we answer all day long and sure we answer some in off hours that, that people miss, but the majority of the calls we're answering is smack dab in the middle of the day. When you're fully staffed, you have a full front desk team, you have a team of receptionists, and we're still answering and scheduling, speaking as your employee and scheduling countless amounts of missed new patient, new customer, new client calls every single month. So I don't want you to listen to that last episode and and maybe poo-poo it because I had made the reference if you don't have a receptionist. That's why I do go back and listen to these because I think the way it came off maybe to some out there was that I was I was referencing businesses that did not have a receptionist. If you have a receptionist, if you have 20 of them, do not make the mistake of thinking you are not missing new patient, new customer, new client calls. It is happening to you. We have the data with right chat and that's what we dove into in that last episode is answering your damn phones. It, it's seeing seeing value and setting up your business in a way that is less stressful, less chaotic, more streamlined, more of a people first business, people over procedure business. And when you do that, you have less leaky holes like missed calls. 
And again, it goes back to you being infinite minded enough to realize that when you look at your data sheet every month, it is lying to you. And it is one of the most difficult parts of my job teaching mindset shift and customer experiences and employee experiences is that most of what we teach and most of what I try to convince all of you out there that you really need, you may not even want it sometimes, but what you really need are these things inside your doors and culture training, digital marketing is all controlled by things that go on inside your doors so hard. And therefore the ones who do do it that way, you stand out so above and beyond the other businesses that just can't wrap their head around it today. Uh, going to be a short one, but today's message, we're going to talk about the halo effect and we're going to continue on really with the phone theme, but the halo effect a very powerful psychological terminology, very powerful. It is something that, and this is where, you know, if you study psychology, and this isn't, you know, what the professor taught you in school. This is real in-depth psychology and then using your imagination based on that psychological term, how to set your business up in a way that accomplishes it, that uses the, the power of the mind and teaches your team, uh, you know, why to say, how to say, what to say, when to say, all the, uh, how you set up your ambiance all around these powerful psychological terms. Now, the reason why... Uh, the halo effect is so powerful. And the next podcast I'm going to be doing is the power of pre versus persuasion. They are two very different things. And I'm going to dive into the differences on there. And it's kind of a funny story that we see on social media. When we talk about the power of persuasion, the comments that we get are pretty funny. And today the halo effect is part of persuasion. So make sure the next podcast I do, make sure that you are tuning in because I'm going to go way more in depth than we are today. So halo effect, let's talk about what it is and and then how you can apply that to the phones whenever your people are answering the phone. So this comes under our employee training pillar. Uh, remember, three pillars, leadership and culture, how you train your team, so employee training, and then how you do your digital marketing. Now, how you take all of those and combine them into a very unique story, right? Every one is a chapter, right? Every time you interact with a customer or a, a customer that hasn't bought from you or a customer that's dropped a lot of their hard-earned money, it's just another chapter of your story. And it's making sure that every one of those chapters is representing your brand, representing that book, representing the author that wrote the book in a very wonderful way and also setting up the next interaction you have with that individual. It's set, helping set it up for success. And so today we look under the employee training pillar and we look at, we look at uh, how the halo effect can really make an impact. So let's look again at the halo effect. So the halo effect is how we as humans, and it's much more in depth than this. If you want to look it up and study it, I suggest you do too. I suggest that you do it. But if you break down all the crazy terminology and the, the high level words and everything, really what the halo effect is saying is as humans, if we like part of the whole, we tend to like the whole. And I'll give you a, a quick example of, of how that can work positively for a business, but how it can also work negatively for a business, right? It could go either way. And, and how it can work positively for a business is this. If you go into a, a restaurant and you have a really wonderful dining experience with a waiter, what oftentimes we will tell ourselves as we leave that place and we leave a really nice tip, we tell ourselves, wow, those waiters, you know, what a great experience. Those waiters are highly trained. You know, that waiter was there when we wanted it not, or when we needed it. And, and and what a fantastic night, like the way they made us feel or how they talked about the wine menu and, and the specials for the evening. It was just an overall amazing experience. Those waiters are really great at that restaurant. And, and that restaurants listening or any business, you just have to use your imagination. As I use the restaurant example, as I, as I talk about here, I usually use restaurant examples. You're just going to have to to use your imagination on how it applies to all interactions in your business. But how that, apply, how that works positively is that you leave with that experience, and because you think that all waiters are highly trained at that restaurant, you are telling yourself, wow, these waiters are great. This experience is great, even though you only experienced one waiter. Right? This is an example of how if we like a little bit of the whole, we tend to like the whole. Now, how this works against you is let's say uh, you buy a car, whatever. Let's say you buy a Ford Bronco. And let's say that Ford Bronco, this again, it works with any car. It's an example is that Ford Bronco turns out to be a piece of crap. Like, let's say it's a lemon, right? It's really bad. Like, you are likely telling yourself this car is a piece of crap. It's in the, it's in the shop all the time. I don't like it. It's troublesome. 
And therefore, if Ford makes one million Broncos, and let's say all the rest of them are great. Let's say they're very reliable. People love them. They've got high reliability scores, blah, blah, blah. You are still telling yourself, most likely, that those Broncos are pieces of crap. And you are very unlikely to go back and ever buy another one. This is how it works against people, right? Even though the rest of the Broncos may be great, you're not going to go buy. At the restaurant, maybe the rest of the waiters are crap, but you're going to come back and buy, right? You see how that works. So it, as it applies, and, and, the, and the more towards the beginning of the relationship you have with people, the more the halo effect comes into play. And that's where we're going to talk about the phones. So many of you out there have such leaky holes with the way your phones are answered, both for your existing customers, but prospective ones that I'm going to talk about specifically today, because you do not see the value in repetitively training people not to be a data collector, but how to sell the value of the business, how to sell why you're unique. And this is so for anybody that's come on, this works for anybody. But the more commoditized you are, the more important these things become, right? I need a plumber and I call three. I need a dentist and I call three. I look up Invisalign on Google and there's 25 search results, right, that I could call from and I start calling, right? The, the greater, you know, lawyer, I need a, you know, a divorce lawyer, God forbid. And, you know, I'm, shop, I'm shopping around and I'm calling places, and obviously, there's, there's realtors. I mean, I could name day spas. You could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about commoditized businesses and how the phones are such a leaky hole. One, like we talked about last time, is because your businesses are missing prospective new patient, new customer calls all day long, every day, and regular business hours. Answering services are worthless. No one's leaving a voicemail anymore. And then now what we're referencing is when you do answer, how these are leaky holes. And this is the mindset going back to constantly thinking about how can I enhance my customer experience? How can I enhance my customer experience? That is a question you must be asking yourself over and over and over and over again all the time because experience drives all the results that you want. If you go back to unexpected experiences for your perspective and existing customers. So back to the phone specifically, when you do answer, all of you out there, you need to think about the amount of times you've called businesses inquiring, right? You, you may had intentions of scheduling, whatever it may be, to where you go in or they come to your house or whatever it might be, meet on a Zoom session, whatever. How many times you've called with the intent of scheduling and didn't? Or you called with the intent of scheduling and even though you kind of didn't want to after you experienced the way the phones went, you did anyway. And that's one of the reasons why you get no-shows, everybody. There's a lot of people be like, yeah, give me the 2.30 on Thursday. I'll take that. But in your brain, you're going, boy, this receptionist is just, they're not answering the questions right. They're just blah. They're even kind of rude sometimes. I don't like the responses. I don't feel good about this business. Okay, but sometimes, depending on your personality, you may say, all right, I'm going to schedule anyway because you feel bad or whatever. But see, this is where the halo effect comes in with your receptionist is that your receptionist has a direct impact on how that caller is going to view your entire whole. Entire whole. Now, the receptionist is one piece of that, just like one Bronco is one piece to the whole entire Ford brand. Right, Just like the, the waiter is one piece to the entire restaurant brand. And, and yes, I gave the restaurant example. That is once you're inside the doors, the halo effect very much applies as well. But where the halo effect applies even more is the phone call in that restaurant when you call for the first time before you've able to experience anything else other than their digital marketing, which represents the mindset and culture and leadership skills of whoever's running that restaurant, just like it does for all of you. What is the search experience like? Today's not about digital marketing, but the point is the only other thing they can experience outside the receptionist before is your digital marketing. Or maybe somebody referred them and said A, B, and C, and then they hit your digital marketing, right? So do you have video gifts? How's the website interact? Do you have live chat that's actually a live chat, not some robot that, that aggravates people, which I'm sure you've all understood and, and experienced before. Your digital marketing stations, YouTube station, all of that stuff. Right, that represents your, your leadership and culture because as I shop around, are you blah, you just like everybody else, are you offer or are you offering unexpected experiences? If you're offering unexpected experiences, it means your leadership team is innovative, thinks about the customer, doesn't think about the finite data, thinks about the infinite data. Blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
So how that phone experience goes, you are now picturing the entire organization that way. And if you want to increase conversion onto your schedule, if you want to increase sales, cash flow, overall customers, referrals, same day starts. If you're that type of business that could meet with somebody like an orthodontist, you know, you walk in looking for Invisalign, you say, all right, I want it from you. You sign the contract, same day type of start, same day sale, whatever the hell you want to call it. But the receptionist is going to drive that behavior more than anybody else in your organization. And for the majority of you out there, a lot of times the receptionist is the least paid in your organization and the least trained when they have as much, if not more of an impact to sale than anybody else you have in your organization. How they overcome, uh, you know, do you take my insurance? You know, I've got this type of leak at my house. Can you fix it? Um, you, you know, uh, I, I'm looking around our, our 30th wedding anniversary is coming up and we really want to go to a steakhouse and, and we've called a few, you know, tell me about your, your steakhouse. You know, I really want Invisalign and we're calling around trying to see where we should buy it from. Like this is what happens when you're commoditized. Now, a lot of times business owners don't even know these things are happening because you don't pay attention to it. Right. And again, and you're in your practice management software, your business software, whatever type of business you are, when they, when you print it out every month, it does not tell you that your receptionist is causing you to reduce your customers, your new customer, your receptionist is costing you sales and revenue. It does not tell you that. So it's why your mind has constantly got to be on experience. How can I set my business up in a way that's a people business first over ever, whatever product or service I have? How can I showcase things better? How can I train my people how to speak in a way that makes us unique, even though we're viewed as the same by everybody else? And at this moment in time, as far as the receptionist goes, yes, there's reciprocity, there's authority, there's all kinds of psychological terms that we will talk on this show today specifically on how powerful the halo effect is. Meaning if that receptionist, you know, uses beautiful edification language, knows how to handle uh, questions and overcome objections. And, and like I said, the edification, if she knows how to hear she, whoever's answering that phone knows how to, to stay in control, really knows how to shed light, use feature advantage, benefit, fab language, knows how to edify certain things that may even be the same in your organization as somebody else I'm calling. But if your receptionist knows how to edify it and sell it in a way, now it sounds way better than what the other guy or girl has, even though it may be the same damn thing. And this is something that is so powerful for all of you to understand that, again, your best marketing dollars are invested inside your doors, even digital marketing. Digital marketing only works is if you're investing in companies that do it for you, but challenge you and coach you and hold you accountable to producing the content from within inside your doors. That's the way good digital marketing works. It does not work with template posts and just crap that looks like everybody else. It does not work. It does not move the needle. Same way when your people speak the exact same way as other people, it does not work. It does not move the needle. You must see the value in investing in having the people that answer your phones trained by experts in sales, verbiage, hospitality, presentation, psychology, again, knowing why to say it, when to say it, how to say it, what to say. You must see value in it. The phones can transform your businesses, everybody. Last episode, I talked about this as it results to not answering calls and you've all experienced it before and that same thing is happening to your business, please understand that it's happening to your business. But it's also, we've all experienced just blah, data collecting, blah receptionists. You know, they don't even sound nice. Some do sound nice, but honestly, that's the only different, differentiating factor sometimes. But if you take somebody that's got the bubbly skill sets, they are a happy person. Your culture's right that makes them happy, right? Again, big part of it. None of these things, culture, training, digital marketing, those things exist as one. They do not exist on their own. Sometimes you have to focus on one of the three to make them successful, but they do not exist on their own. You want a good digital marketing presence? Your culture better damn well be high level. You want your receptionist to speak at a high level way when you train them, when you're not looking, your culture better support it. The halo effect is powerful, everybody. Digital marketing plays a big part of the halo effect today, but I wanted to do one specific to the phones. Today is not what should be said. Like that's going to be podcast for another time, and it's certainly what our customers are trained on. But today, again, back to the mindset. So technically, even though this is about the phones, this is still leadership or culture, right? But it's also 
training because you're training them what to say, how to say it, why to say it, when to say it, all these skill sets that I talked about, and it can transform how people view your brand. It will reduce your no-shows. You want to reduce your no-show appointments out there, everybody? Make sure your receptionist knows how to sell so where you come across in a very unique way that gets them psychologically prepped to buy, that gets them excited to come in and buy. This is the training that we provide. Phone scripts are great, but it goes way beyond a script, everybody. There's two forms of learning podcasts coming on that. You've got scripting, which is not what the form of learning is called, but then you've got a whole nother level. And that's going to be a podcast for another time that I want to dive into the weeds. See value in your receptionist, everybody. It is one of, if, if, if it is one of the most in outside of culture, which is always the number one marketing investment. Outside of that, your phones are the largest leaky opportunity, lost opportunity, excuse me, cost for your business, period. But again, most of you can't put your finger on it, so you're out thinking you need advertising. Reinvest that money into your receptionist, training them, answering calls, speaking the right way, et cetera, et cetera, that you heard on last episode and today, and you will transform your business. You have my word. Hope everybody enjoyed today. The power of the phones, everybody. If you see value in this stuff, there isn't one amount of advertising outside your doors that you will do that will ever make you unique. But there are all kinds of advertising and marketing dollars you could invest inside your doors on culture training, digital marketing that will make you stand out like you cannot believe. And it will transform your business. It will transform your life because your business will thrive. Employees, as you gain these skill sets, it'll transform your career because you will offer more value to the business you work for to whenever you ask for a raise, you will get it. All right. Always be striving to improve. And the phones was the message today. All right, everybody. Thanks for your support. Like us on YouTube. As always, share this with your friends and colleagues. Give us a nice five-star rating over on, over on the iTunes, wherever you're listening to on the audio experience. We'll talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye.